wasn't expected Would you believe After all we projected Of a child and a manger Lonely and so We can stumble Unlikeliest hero Wrapped in his mother We shown just a child Is this who we were waiting for? Down from their thrones, and how many lords have abandoned their homes? And how many graves have become the least for me? And how many gods have poured out their hearts to romance a world that is torn all apart? And how many fathers gave up their sons for me? Since for his pleasure and birth for the cross is suffered, do you believe? Is this who we were waiting for? Is this who we for? How many kings stepped down from their thrones? And how many lords have abandoned their homes? And how many graves have become the leaves for me? Sons for me, the only one to die for me. Oh, and all for me. Oh, 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 oh,
some days to come with all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings you are my everything and I will adore you in life define us? How many of you has ever said, how many of you could say that there is something in your life that happened at some point that was a defining moment in your life? Anybody out there? Okay. All of us have in some way or another those things that we always go back to in our mind, those defining moments, those things where we go back and go, you know what? This has really, really impacted my life, either in a positive way or in a negative way. You see, for many, that defining moment is the time when we know that we've had an encounter with God. Many people can tell you, you know what, my defining moment in my life was when I chose to hand my life over to Jesus Christ, who is our risen Savior as we celebrate Him today who I gave my life over to him, and I realized I can't do this anymore on my own. I've got to have someone that is bigger than I am to help me in my life. Today, you may not be at that place. At the end of this service, I'm going to give you a time to where you can encounter him today on purpose, to where you do it on a, on a willful time that you are at. You see, God never leaves you at that encounter moment. For so many, many people, they think, well, I got, I asked Christ into my life. Well, it's over. God never leaves you at that encounter moment. God takes you from there to the place he desires you to be if you will travel with him. The reason many of us are not at another level in our spiritual life is because we have chosen to stay where we are. It is not God's will for you to stay at that one place. You know, that would be like, like Brenda and I uh, getting married and me saying, you know what? At the altar where we, when we received uh, our marriage vows and everything like that, saying, you know what? I like this moment, so I'm just going to stay right here. 26 years later, they're trying to have church and I'm still standing there on the stage. What are you doing here? This was an encounter moment and I'm not leaving this place. That's what a lot of us do, though. We have an encounter moment, and we say, I love it so much that I'm just going to stay right here. Can I tell you, you are missing so much more in your life that Christ wants to do for you. And the way you do that is you travel with God. The Holy Spirit is your guide. He is the one that leads you into all these areas. We're going to talk today about some people who had some encounter moments in their life. And we're going to talk about one of them who his encounter will show us what happens to us in our life when we have an encounter. Then the last person we're going to talk about today is going to show us what to do with that encounter moment that we have in our life. So I want us to all just pray right now. And I want us to just get ready to worship God and to love Him and to just embrace Him in so many different areas. Are you ready? Everybody ready? I got one person over here that's ready. Are y'all ready? I got more of you. We'll do it with those who are ready. Father, we thank you today for what you're going to do. Lord, I pray today that you would minister in a way that only you can do. Father, let no distraction come that would stop us from hearing you and from listening to what you want to do in our lives. And today, when we walk out of here, let us be able to say, I encountered God on purpose. I chose today to encounter him. And everyone said, amen. The first person I want to look at today is a guy by the name of Isaiah. 
Now, Isaiah, in his life, he shows us what happens to us in an encounter. He shows us this. Now, Isaiah, in the chapter that we're going to read from today, the king had died, and Isaiah was a little, you know, down and everything like that about this. But Isaiah did something that shows us an area that we need to move to. When Isaiah was down, when Isaiah was going through a time of disappointment and different things like that, Isaiah went and talked to God. Now, I want you to listen to me today. When you are in a bad situation, most of the times, you cannot get yourself out of it. You can't get yourself out of it. You need help. Look at your neighbor and say, you need help. Somebody's going, yeah, I know it. I just said it to my husband and my wife. They do. We all need help in our life. Here Isaiah is, and Isaiah did something. He went, and he was in the tabernacle. He was there worshiping God. And here's what the scripture says in Isaiah chapter number 6 and verse number 1. It says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. And above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two they covered their faces. And with two they covered their feet. And with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory. The first thing that you need to understand, and if you're filling in notes today, here's your first one. Number one, God wants to reveal Himself to you. It is God's desire to reveal Himself to you. To you. Here's the problem. God's not going to chase you down. We think, well, if God wants to talk to me, He can find me. God knows where you are. You got to find yourself. You got to find where you are in that situation. Here we see Isaiah saying, in the, king, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. There was something in this moment that Isaiah said, you know what? I can't do this on my own. I've got to have some more help where I am. And Isaiah went and he sought the Lord. And the Bible tells us that God revealed himself to him. Now, a lot of times we would like to have this type of revelation. Well, I don't know. What? Can you imagine today someone praying and all of a sudden the presence of God coming in this place to where the the Bible says just the train of his robe filled the temple. Can you imagine that physically happening today? We would go, okay, I believe. I believe. Are you ready? Everybody listen to me. Everybody look this way. Today... The presence of God has filled this temple. Because the Bible says where two or three gather in my name, he says, I'm there. And I look around today and I think there's more than two or three here. There are people here today that came. You may have come for different reasons. You may have come today out of tradition. I go to church on Easter and Christmas. You may have come today to be with your family because you know mama's got a ham in the oven cooking. Can I get a witness in the house? You may be here today spending time with family and all those things. But I'm here to tell you that God has a purpose for you being here today. And that is for you to experience God in some shape, form, or fashion. Isaiah experienced God. You see, God can be found by those who actively seek Him. The problem is the only time that we seek God many, in many situations is when we're in trouble. When we're, when we're down, when we're out, when we're like waiting on something, you know, maybe to be repossessed, we go, oh God, help me. Or when we're sick, all of a sudden we've learned prayers. Or when our family's in trouble, all of a sudden we begin to find God. Everybody listen. God wants to find you in your good moments as well as your bad moments. God wants to show himself mighty in the good times as well as the bad. If God helps you out of the bad times, 
Think about what it would be like experiencing him during the good times. Think about how much larger it would be. So we find Isaiah teaching us that God wants to reveal himself to you. Number two, we find Isaiah teaching us that God wants to settle the issue of yesterday. Some of us live in yesterday. Some of us live in our past. Some of us let our past define us. Some of us believe that we will never be good enough because of this. Some of us believe that God can never use us because of all the crazy things that we've done. Are you ready? All of us are crazy. All of us have done crazy things in our life. Isaiah 6, chapter number 4 says, At the sound of their voices, the doorpost and the threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Isaiah is there. All of a sudden, the place fills with smoke, and Isaiah cries out, kind of like I would, Whoa! What's going on here? Isaiah was overwhelmed by the presence of God. He says, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Isaiah was identifying some things in his past. He said, I'm unclean. I can't, I can't be used by God. I can't be in God's presence like this. God couldn't do something with me, but here's what happened. When Isaiah confessed this, look what happened. One of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off of the altar. And with it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Are you ready? If you circle in your notes or something, some of you need to do this. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. God took care of Isaiah's yesterday. Isaiah was backing up and he's going, Well, I can't be used by God. What is this? I'm in the presence of God. I ought to just die right here. I am no good. And what happened was an angel came over. Once Isaiah identified those things in his life, an angel came over, took a coal off of the altar, purged his lips, cleansed him, and he said... Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. Why are we here today? We're here because our guilt has been taken away. And we are celebrating a risen Savior. And now our sin has been atoned for. The blood that was shed at Calvary took care of our sins. And when Jesus walked out of that tomb under his own power, he said, you know what? The power that I have over life and death, your past can't hold you down. Your future is what you are to embrace. Somebody needs to embrace their future today. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. You may not be able to let go of your past. But God knows how to handle it for you. Amen. You may not be able to let go of it. You keep bringing it up. You keep saying, well, I was hurt in church before. Can I tell you, everybody's been hurt in church. Amen. Everybody has. Quit using that as an excuse. It's old now. Everybody's been hurt. Everybody's been hurt in church. You need to find a new one. Well, you know, there's just a bunch of hypocrites that go there. Okay, are you ready? There are hypocrites everywhere. There's hypocrites at your work. Are you going to quit work? For some reason, we set this real high standard on the church, but not on our life and society. Our friends can be hypocrites, but we can't let the people at church be that. Are you ready? We are all a bunch of people that are imperfect, serving a God who is perfect, and we're trying to make our way to Him day by day, mistake by mistake, forgiveness by forgiveness. We get a little bit closer. The Bible tells us, draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Are you ready today? I want to take away your excuse for not encountering God. There will always be somebody that hurts you. The question is, what are you going to do with the hurt? Today, the Bible tells Tells us that God wants you to settle yesterday. Forget about what's happened in the past. Forget about what's happened in all the other churches. Forget about it. Well, I just know it'll go good for a little while. And then all of a sudden it's going to happen again. You know why? Because you're ready for it to happen again. Because you keep bringing it up all the time. You are leaving the door open. Are you ready? Shut the door. Put a padlock on it. Bolt it. 
close, cement it, whatever you've got to do, and don't go back to the door anymore. Your guilt has been taken away. The next point, God wants to give you a seemingly impossible vision. This is, this is what is happening to Isaiah during this time. Isaiah is saying, you know what? I was in the presence. God wanted to reveal himself to me. But I had some things in my past. God took care of those. And now God doesn't leave you at that point. You remember I said an encounter with God is to do something in your not life, not to leave you at that place. So here we go. You see, Isaiah chapter number 6 and verses 8 through 9 says, And then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, When did I hear him? After he had revealed himself to me. After I had allowed him to take away my yesterday, God then gives us a vision. And you know what? Notice the word there. Seemingly impossible vision. He says, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Here's what Isaiah said. He said, I see the Lord that has revealed himself to me. I see the God who has cleansed me of my yesterday. I'll go. He said, here am I, send me. And he said, the Lord said, go and tell this people. You know the best way to get past your past? Begin to confess that your past is past. The Bible tells us that we have overcome through the blood of the Lamb. That's already taken care of for us. The blood of the Lamb is taken care of. Jesus took care of that. And here's your part, the word of your testimony. My testimony cannot be continually that I'm still in this place. When that keeps coming up to me, I have to go, no, 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 no. I will not go back to that mindset of thinking. I will not go back to that place. God has revealed himself to me. My yesterday is taken care of. And I know this may seem like impossible because I've lived this way all of my life. But today is a new day. Lord, here I am. Send me to somebody that's in the same place I've been in so I can help them get out of it. The way you get past your past is help somebody get out of theirs. I'm going to say that again. The way you get out of your past is by helping somebody who is still in theirs. That's one of the reasons I love a ministry that you hear me talk about a lot here at church and that's Celebrate Recovery. Celebrate Recovery is a great ministry that is doing some great things in some people's lives. Because all of us have to get past our yesterday. And there is a group of people on Friday evenings that meet here. They worship God and they help each other say, don't talk about where you were. Talk about where you're going. In Christ, I am a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You see, the answer to God's call on your life will define your future. How you answer God. Today, before you leave here, we are going to provide you with an opportunity to encounter God. An opportunity to say something to God. Some of you will walk away going, I'm really hungry and I would like to go to lunch. So you know what the whole thing you're going to get out of today? They had some music and I got to go and eat ham and deviled eggs. That, that's what you're going to get out of it. I got some waiting on me too. Some of you are going to say, you know what? Something happened inside. I'm not real sure what to do with it, but I'm going to go back and find out. And then there's some of you that have been wrestling with your yesterday. And today you're going to say, I choose to encounter God. So that's Isaiah's life. That's what happens. Now I want to show you real quickly a guy by the name of Paul. And Paul teaches us what to do with the encounter. Isaiah in chapter 6 teaches us what the encounter does in us okay it helps it helps God reveal himself it helps us get past our yesterday and then it helps us embrace an impossible vision now Isaiah Paul is going to teach us what we do with what we've learned okay that's a real important part of this so the first thing that I want us to see is in Acts chapter number 9 Acts chapter number 9 
We find this guy at this time, his name is Saul. Saul has been someone who is ridiculing the Christians. He, is, he has killed a lot of them. He has gone into homes where they're having church. If, we were, if this was modern day, uh, the time that Paul was in, here's what would happen. We would be having church and Paul and some of his cohorts, some of the soldiers that had been assigned to him would bust through the doors, these doors right here, and they would begin to arrest people for worshiping God. They would even kill some people. They would kill some of the leaders and different things like that. So if y'all see Paul come in, my security team, please come. This is what would happen in, in our life, okay? If we were in today, here's where we are. In Acts chapter number nine, says, and as he neared Damascus on his journey, Paul or Saul is going somewhere now, okay? And as he entered Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him and he fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? You need to understand in your life, you are not giving excuses to yourself. You're giving excuses to God. He says, why do you persecute me? Saul back up and goes, who are you, Lord? He says, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. And then he replied, now get up and go. If you write in your notes again, circle that. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what to do. Number one, Paul teaches us you must learn to take a step of faith. Now, get up and go. And I'll tell you what to do. He didn't tell him ahead of time. I don't know about you, but if I was Saul, I'd be going like, go where? No, you just begin to walk. And as you begin to walk, I will reveal where you are to go. This is where a lot of us get messed up at. We want God to tell us the whole picture, the whole thing. God's going, I can't do that. I want to see your faith. You get up and start moving. Then I'll tell you what's going to happen. You see, faith says, I will do something with what has happened to me. I will do something with what has happened to me. In Acts chapter number 20 and verse number 22, it says, And now, compelled by the Spirit, Paul said, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. Not knowing what's going to happen. Well, Pastor, what's going to happen to me when I accept Christ? Well, I have to give up some things. What about these? I've heard this and I've heard that. Let me tell you something. Just embrace Him. Begin to walk. God's not going to force anything on you. All He wants is you to open the door for Him to come in. Take the step of faith. Number two, you have to expect resistance. Now, wouldn't it be nice if when we accepted Christ, everything was just like, we could just be like little Cole who was up here. Let me tell you, that youngin is innocent. I, I love that. I mean, he didn't care who you were. He didn't care what you had on. He didn't care any of that. All Cole knew was he had a, how does he say? Guitar. Cole had a guitar, and he was up here having him a good time. Can I tell you, Paul, Cole taught a lot of us a lesson today. Cole taught us what we should do with God. He said, come to me, how? As a little child. Cole didn't care who you were. He didn't care if you had a tie on or if you didn't. He didn't care if you were singing in key or not. He didn't care. All he did was he moved up here. Someone told him, Cole, take your guitar today and you can sing away. Cole loves away. I've got video of Cole singing away. He can be at the house. They can put the CD on of the band playing. And all of a sudden, he's looking for his guitar. And he's got a microphone. And, buddy, he throws down. <laughs> Cole, before long, will be up here in some church leading worship somewhere. It's, it's in him. You can see it already. You see... We've got to expect resistance in our life. What people say about us. Some people might go, you shouldn't let Cole up there. What are you going to do with everybody else? Get over it. I don't know if you should have all them lights up there. Are you ready? Get over it. How do you know they're not going to have these in heaven? I, I think you need to sing out of the Redback hymnal. How many of you? 
He may not have it in heaven. I know that's going to blow some of our minds. <laughs> I used to hear it, y'all singing off the wall. That meant that you had, how many of you remember when you had the, um, uh, the overhead and the transparencies? That was high tech. I'm telling you, I, I, I used to be, I was the, the transparency remover. And you had to get it just right so that your thumb didn't slide up on the screen. How do you know that we're not going to have this in heaven? You see, we have this perception of what things are supposed to be like. And there is a resistance that happens inside of us from accepting what God is wanting to do in our life. Everybody listen one more time. How do you know that this is what it's not going to be like in heaven? How do I know that it's not going to be traditional in heaven? Can I tell you? I don't really care as long as I get there. So put, quit, quit putting weight on things that don't really matter. I like... I like what Mr. Hutt said. He, we were talking today about music and stuff like that, and he told me, he said, I think, it, I think I'll get this right, Mr. Hutt. He's talking about a banjo player, and he was in a, you know, this building playing, and uh, someone said something about it being loud or something, and he said, I may not can play good, but I can play loud. You know, I believe that was somewhere around in there, you know. Can I tell you, we got good people up here, and I don't care. If it's too loud for you, bring some cotton. I don't care. If it's too cold, bring a jacket. It's okay. If it's too hot, bring a fan. I don't care. How do we know that when we get to heaven, it's not going to be warm? How do we know when we get to heaven, it's not going to be loud? You see, quit letting resistance stop you from embracing what God wants to do for you. The last thing, my band is coming back at this time. Paul made the statement... But I don't know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. Paul knew there would be resistance. If you follow Christ, there will be resistance. There will be. There will be people telling you you shouldn't give these things up. There will be telling, people telling you this. The last thing you need to understand is this. You must focus on eternity. Acts 20 and 24 has, says, However I consider my life worth nothing to me, if only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus Christ has given me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. 2 Corinthians 4 and 16 says, Therefore, we do not lose heart we do not lose heart though outwardly we are wasting away yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all so we fix our eyes not on what is seen there you go but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary. But what is unseen is eternal. Everybody right here. We fix our eyes on the eternal. We fix our eyes on tomorrow, not today. We fix our eyes on the Jesus Christ that is not on the cross anymore. That walked out of that tomb. And the Bible tells us today is sitting at the right hand of the Father. Making intercession for us.